University, actually here at the Plaster Complex at the University. That's Missouri State. My name is Dave Vinson alongside Ashley Moeller. This is a women's doubles match. Amy Fadden and Camilla Quinteros with uh, LFC versus Kim Butcher and Stacy Stradley representing Utah State, I believe. That's right. They're one of Herm Olson's group. He coaches a variety of kids up there, which he couldn't make the trip here because his daughter's getting married, so congrats to them. You and I just saw Herm Olson last week at the Salt Lake City Pro Stop. It was nice seeing him, one of the greatest guys in handball, a big supporter of the collegiate, quote unquote, growing the game thing that he does. Stacy is into photography, he's been playing for a year and a half, and Kim is studying aviation. She's a pilot, two trying years. Trying to be a pilot. Trying to be a pilot. She learned by meeting Herm Olson right there at the school. We have the referee on the court right here talking to these women athletes, LFC versus Utah State. Looks like LFC will be serving. First server is Amy Fadden. LFC always comes color coordinated when they step onto the court representing their school. When well, I got a peek at Camilla's gloves, she's actually a studio art major in digital media. And she designed her left-handed glove with some swirly, sparkly, frilly things. So if she knows, she knows if someone steals her gloves, they're personally designed. Well, I like those. I saw somebody else on her team with those green, fluorescent green gloves yesterday on one of the matches, and I was wondering, how do you get those? A strong serve right there from Amy Fadden. She's majoring in communications and taking a course in Spanish as well. She's been playing for two years. All of these women players have played for about two years. Nice dig right there. Nice rally, actually. There is a side out. Zero serves three. See Stacy Stradley is serving here. Must be exciting, Ashley. Take yourself back to the very first time that you were on film on a live broadcast. It's a lot of mixed emotions in there. You wanna you wanna play good, but you know, handball, there's so many bounces and in the course of a match, you could hit the ball a couple hundred times, sure, if sure. not more, and you do make mistakes. We all do. So how embarrassing is it the first time you made a mistake right in front of a camera? Well, all I thought about was my dad calling and yelling at me about missing. <laughs> well, he was watching at home. Yep, he watches. But we watch these young women athletes. They have to be a little intimidated by the show court. It has the glass side wall. There's cameras all over the place. You're over there interviewing them before the match, and they go... If they didn't already know this was in a serious match, now they really do know it's serious. Well, the Utah girls, they were at the Salt Lake City tournament last weekend, so they kind of got a feel for seeing the cameras and watching the interviews, seeing what we do up there. Kim Butcher puts a nice corner kill on that last shot, five to three. The Utah State winning right now. Actually, you're talking about balance. Between all four girls, they've played no less than a year and a half or no more than two years. So they've all been on the court for about the same amount of time. And all of them learning in class, answer. which is actually, I think, good for the sport of handball. If you're Second picking up the sport okay. in class, I think <laughs> that's actually better than if a family member teaches you how to play. I mean, I could be wrong. I think there's m less family members playing handball than there are classes out there that have the opportunity to introduce to kids. Three, sir, six. Score is three to six. One of the major benefits Short. to learning from your family is most of the time the players start very young. Their parents get them on the court, but by the time you're in college, you're already 18 to 20 years old when you're picking the game up. That's a good serve right there from Amy Fadden. Now Camilla Quinteros, representing LFC, serving for the first time here. 
And you can see that that serves very popular, Ashley. I know that even on the Pro Tour, you're still seeing it with some of the elite women, that underhand lob serve in the back corner, the, the top pro players even do it. Six serves three. When you're playing match after match, it definitely saves your arm going to a lob serve rather than hitting power serves all the time. Did that make it? Six serves three. That's the wrong score. Well, maybe it isn't. Just a little confusion in there. Seven serves three. Stacy Stradley is taking photography at Utah State. Her family watching back home right now as she plays here at the collegiate level and tries to make it to the next round. That's all you can hope for. You can take these tournaments in stride. You can either play every shot, one shot at a time, like you hear the cliches in all pro sports when the players are being interviewed, or you can say, I'm gonna take it game by game or match by match or tournament by tournament. How do you look at it when you play? Is it like every single shot's just the next thing on your list, or you kind of start looking past that and getting ready? Well, I try to play shot by shot, but usually it goes to thinking about the next game or the next tournament. How bad your boss is treating you. <laughs> You're like I am. We're, we're drifters. I don't like to think about one thing for too long. I sometimes find myself in the court and I'm thinking about what I'm going to eat for lunch, Ten which I'm three. sure you know about. <laughs> I actually think about that while I'm eating lunch. Thinking about the next meal already? Yes. So I can relate. That's a huge, powerful fist. I think that at this level, if there are players out there that feel that they would compete at this Eleven level three. right here, one big tip of advice, one I would say tip or a big piece of advice that we can give is focus on how you're scoring points. I mean, you look over at Kim Butcher. She just hit a humongous fish shot to the ceiling, Ashley, and it went back and just died on the back wall. Why don't you say to yourself at that point, every ball I'm going to hit, I'm just going to do that roundhouse up to the ceiling. I mean, might as well because you just got a free point, and if it works again and again and again, just keep doing it. I see a lot of players have a mindset on something they think that they want to do, but if you get points in there, should just keep going back to what's giving you the points, don't you think? Yeah, but a lot of times I know I think about doing the same thing, but then I want to keep my opponent guessing and off balance. But if it keeps working, then it makes sense to keep doing it. Well, here's in, in the sense for Kim Butcher, she's now hit two fish shots that went to the back wall. Both of them are either side outs or points. I think all of a sudden what happens is you see some success with shots like that, and then you all of a sudden start uh, doing it all the time. You know, you get early success. It also can work out to a disadvantage because you say, well, I'm getting three points to my fish shot to the ceiling. And when you start playing an advanced player, you get torn up. So it actually can work the other way in a negative way too. Butcher Stradley representing the Utah State handball program. Coached by Herm Olson. He's not here. Do they have an actual coach here? No, they said there's only three of them here, and they're just on their own. Point. But Jimmy London is in the back enjoying himself. Point Maybe he's three. giving them some signs for advice. Jimmy's into it. There was a screen, no call from the referee. Amy Fadden looked like she couldn't really see that ball. Referee's marking the score card so she doesn't see the frustration on the players faces which beginning players won't let the refs know that they couldn't see it like the pro players do they just put their head back down and get in there and keep playing this is a good rally ashley out. what i do see is a lot of smiles in there which is which is good. Three serves, 15. Point. Four serves, 15. That's a 
good shot there right along the wall. I know those aren't your favorite, the scrapers. Well, luckily I wear the gloves with the tips at the end, so I don't have to jam my fingers as much. How is it when you have fingernails and you play on a court where one of the objective, uh, objectives of your opponent is to slide the ball down a wall? That's yep. when you bust your fingernail off. 15, there goes looking pretty. There is a timeout called here by LFC. And we're going to take a timeout too. We'll be back in 45 seconds. Stick with us here at racefreight.com. Seamus O'Carroll. And we are back here at 16 to 4, middle of the first game. My name is Dave Vincent. Dave Fink is on the portable microphone. This is a wonderful women's match. Point. 17 serves 4. Point. Amy Fadden of LFC, Dave. I played my wife in a tennis tournament two summers ago. At that time, she had no idea what handball was. She was taking tennis lessons with a good buddy of mine. Told me she was going to Lake Forest. I said, oh, I know Lake Forest. She said, no, not Wake Forest. I said, I know, Lake Forest. And I believe in her second week on campus, she was introduced to handball. She's been playing every day since. Now here she is at her second collegiate national handball championship. She's a very good tennis player was ranked one of the one of the top ranked girls in high school tennis in Pittsburgh. Wow. And she's only been playing handball for about a year and a half. She's studying communications in Spanish hmm. at LFC. I can see some of her tennis swing and her serve there, Dave. She drops her and under the ball and comes over the top of it. Half out. Four serves 18. Point. Very tentative swing right there from Stacy Stradley. Actually, that was Kim Butcher playing the left side in the white shirt. So I meant to say. We have Stacy Stradley in the blue shirt. That actually says Stradley on the yes. back of her shirt. Yes, it, does. Well, it should say it on the front because that's what we can see from this amazing angle here in the booth, looking over the football line on the left side glass. Point. Seven serves 18. Now 
now Stacy Stradley steps in. Kim Butcher on the left side. You see a lot of smiles coming from Stradley. After every shot, she has a smile on her face. And you can tell she's from Salt Lake City, Utah. Everyone from Salt Lake smiles. Maybe because their teeth are so white. Hmm. Not sure. If it's I was a happy up place. If I was up 18 to 7, I think I'd have a smile on my face also. Point. 19 There's a big setup off the back wall for the Pittsburgh tennis star. And a nice get right there from Butcher, just unable to dig it out. I believe Amy also plays on the Lake Forest women's tennis team. So she's a dual sports star in Lake Forest College. That seems pretty common at Lake Forest. They get a lot of the softball players also and football players that mm. play on their team. Well, I know that Pat Jarvis, who was an All-American last year from Lake Forest, was also one of their star football players. He said he actually gave up football in his senior season to concentrate on handball. Well, there was a young lady last night, Maddie Hale from Michigan State, who is almost six feet tall. She came in to the Michigan State basketball team as a walk-on, and they gave her a position but said, you're probably not going to play much. You'll be right in the bench, but you can work out with the team, and if there's a couple injuries, we could probably get you in. She said, no, thank you. I'll just focus on handball. Hmm. Michigan State, a powerhouse in basketball. She walked on, no scholarship, and decided to turn it down and just focus on the handball. That's dedication. That's what this sport does to you. It makes you grow. Well, the New York Knicks told Jeremy Lin the same thing, and he said, you know what? I'll take my chances on the bench. It's worked out pretty well for him, I'd say. Although you'll remind me that it didn't work out so well last night it against was. LeBron and company. Jeremy Lin looked like he still played for the Golden State Warriors last night. Hmm. He didn't actually get on the court with them. That's why. Hmm. He shouldn't have got on the court last night. <laughs> you are watching the 60th United States Handball Association's four-wall collegiate handball championships. We have Dave Fink, Ashley Moeller, yours truly, Dave Vincent, as we stream live at racerate.com. It's Amy Fadden and Camilla Quinteros from LFC versus... Kim Butcher and Stacy Stradley from the University, uh, excuse me, Utah State. I want to make sure I don't get my, you know how they are in Utah. If you s call a team Utah State and not Utah or University of Utah, they could get really upset. Don't want to break any code violations. Mm. So we're going to take a quick break now as we have game number two coming up in about four minutes. Another big, long, exciting day of handball today. It's 1.22 in the central time zone here in Springfield, Missouri. And then as we look toward 3 o'clock, it's, excuse me, 2 o'clock. Michael Wu from Berkeley, Cal Berkeley and Alfredo Herrera from Pacific will be on. That's going to be a match. I'm looking forward to that match. That'll be a very exciting match. Michael Wu right now asleep. That just goes to show how relaxed that great athlete is. An amazing import from the New York time zone. Comes from the left coast, or I should say the right coast, over to the left coast. And he has made an impact at Cal Berkeley. A very popular young man on campus there. And Alfredo, Berkeley. Alfredo Herrera on the Oregon State depth charts. He's toggling between five and four as the fourth best player in Oregon, which is pretty good. He works. That's true, and he's a, a player for Pacific. We're going to catch them coming up at 2 o'clock. That will be a wonderful match to have here live. And then at 3 o'clock, it's Hughes and Neary from DCU up against Contreras and Sturette from LFC. That's going to be a fun one to watch as well. Just saw them having a word with their coach. 
course, the Hall of Fame of Coach Mike Dow. I think you'll see a couple new wrinkles from these Lake Forest ladies here in this second game as they try and push these Utah State right. Dynamos into the tiebreaker. Well, the Dynamo for the Utah State team is Kim Butcher, who does the shots like that. And that's how the team got the points in the first game. She's the one looking for offensive opportunities. She's also very strong. I would not be surprised if she wasn't a standout in softball or is on the softball team. She has amazing power. You can tell the way she strokes the ball. She packs a punch. And Amy, a little bit impatient there, trying to spike the ball about an inch high. I thought a great block right there, Dave. Smart move from Kim Butcher, who stepped out into the lane and kept Amy from getting to that ball. Referee, though, called it a hinder, and there's another point. I think the serve from Stradley is absolutely impressive. I mean, well, I'm very surprised to see this awkward service return formation from Lake Forest. That was a screen, no call. Oh, and there was that overhand roundhouse tomahawk into the corner that almost made it. I'm going to try, try that shot. I, I like it. I saw Jeff Strybig hit one like that and killed it in the corner. Well, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar used to have that and on the basketball There's a reason court. he's the Half leading five. scorer in the history of the NBA. It's called the sky hook. It's indefensible, and there's only been one guy in the history of basketball that was able to execute it. Point. Well, it's virtually impossible to block it, especially when it's coming from on a seven-footer. Actually, seven-foot-four. Kareem, one of the most underrated Point. players in the history of the sport. You don't hear his name a lot, Dave, on the short list of all-time greats, but he's at the top of my list. I think he'd be at the top of my list if he would have hustled. Kind of like Becca Michaels. Well, see, you like that effort. I like the titles and the stats. Okay. Effort doesn't do too much for me. It's all about efficiency. Six to three is the score here with Butcher and Stradley in the box. That's the stuff that's been getting the points right there from Kimberly Butcher who butchers that shot in the left corner. She chopped it up and finished it off right in that left corner. Look at these, these long rallies here. Oh, she's just. Half out. Seven, six, three. You have to like how aggressive Kim's looking to be up in that Second front serve. left court. See, Kimberly doesn't have to worry about that in tennis, where you swing and miss and then run back and try to get it again. That's why playing inside of a cube brings a whole new dimension Well, maybe you've never been lobbed at the net when you whiff an overhead and run behind it and take another swing at it. It happens. Nine, that was actually Amy, though, not Kimberly. Thanks for the correction. What's wrong here, Flora? 
you think that that Amy sometimes gets a little too far in front of herself on her swings? I think Amy's taking too many balls. You see Kimberly stuck on that right side wall. She hasn't hit a ball in seven minutes now. It's Camilla, sorry. <laughs> I'd like to see um, Camilla switch over to the left side. Ashley, what do you think? I mean, we saw that for the first game they, they got outnumbered there and, and the points now here. It's an eight point lead against their counterparts. It looks like Camilla Quinteros is actually a very good player, but she's sort of stuck over to the right side. What would you do? Well, it never hurts to switch. If you're losing already, might as well switch something <laughs> up and try to get some points on the board. Dave Fink, I mean, we've seen her serve. That's about m as the only thing that we've seen Camilla do here. It's really sort of a two on one game. Amy Fadden versus uh, Stacy and Kim. And I, maybe we should get Camilla more involved in the game here to take some of that pressure away from. Well, I agree with you. I, I was surprised they didn't make some sort of tactical adjustment between games, having spoken with Coach Dow. Thought they would come back in with a, a slightly different strategy. Right now, Amy's playing about 95% of the court. And you'll see, even on the server's return, look at how close Camilla is to the right side wall. Amy pretty much playing in the same spot she would play in singles, maybe just about sure. six inches over to the left. These women having a pretty good time in here, and there's a, a point right there. Point. 12, Thirsty. Beautiful shot there from Amy Fadden as she drives the ball down the left wall. Kim, no play on it. That's actually a good serve, Dave. But you also see Amy Fadden has more of the instincts of an athlete. When she saw that that ball could have made the front wall, she targeted up toward the front, even though it was on Camilla's side of the court. Either that or Camilla just knew instantly it wasn't going to make it. But you also, you know, as much as you said that Amy has taken the majority of the ball, she's also very aggressive when it comes to that, Dave. Well, I think what you're seeing with Amy, Dave, is that she's much more of a singles player. And it's difficult for a, a singles player to adjust to the doubles game. Some, some do it better than others. I like this. That was fun. Oh, and it's hit her elbow on the way up on it. That was a great get on the serve. It was buried in the glass back there, and she dug it out. Kim Butcher, though, just smacked that ball right back at Camilla, who just stuck her hands up. Unfortunately for her, though, it rolled up her arm. Great sports, sportsmanship from, from Camilla. Unfortunately, Dave, you're still stuck on zero laps with Ashley Moeller. Got a long mountain to climb here. Not you going for laughs, laugh. just trying to paint a picture. I'll find some more collegiate players to put in here that'll laugh at his jokes that they haven't heard yet. Point. Not going for laughs, just trying to paint a picture. Mm. Today is a no laugh day. I'm taking this one serious. It's a good day to do it. Hey, nice return right there. Look at that little paddle up front. Dave, you might learn something here from Kim Butcher. I actually have been learning. 14 serves five. Continue to learn. So you are like Paul Brady. This time the story might Point. actually be true. Be used in a <laughs> good moment. 15 serves five. Stacy Stradley serving here, number 53, representing U Utah Point. State. She gets another point here. I don't believe, Ashley, that that Fadden and Quinteros are that much inferior to these other women players. I just think they have the wrong lineup in there. If they could just get a return on the serve, they're pretty good in the volleys. And it's just all about getting the serve back, which is what we've seen a lot today in the women's matches. I think that somebody really worked with Stradley and her serve. She's got as we're getting a note pat, passed to us here, she's got 18 
unreturned serves in this match so far. That's dominating. And frankly, you just have to make sure they stay out of the service box, right, Dave? Because you're not going to be able to get that serve back or learn it in the middle of a match. You have to, those are the things you need to go back home and strategize about. So well, I think it's always the strategy to keep your opponents out of the server's box. But you're right, Dave. 18 unreturned serves in doubles is very difficult to accomplish when you have two players. So it's not like you can catch them guessing the wrong way. So the only way to get over that is just don't let them get into the server's box, right? And hope for some luck if they do. You've got to keep yourself in the server's box and make sure that you take advantage of all of your opportunities in the server's box. Now, Ashley, when it comes to Camilla and, and Amy Fadden, my lineup change would be to flip sides, let Amy still play aggressive like she does and cut balls up front and still run all around the court like she's doing right now, that, that sort of game of singles. Would you do that same thing right now That since you're down 16 to five? Um, well, like I said, it wouldn't hurt, but we haven't five. seen much from Camilla right, to make a judge. It would make a difference. They obviously know something we don't. Point. I mean, it just seems like Camilla's just out of the play instantly. It's like a game of singles out there. That was a nice return. That left-handed paddle has actually been pretty successful for Amy Fadden. I might be learning a little something here, that inside well, the out. margin for error, <clears throat> playing the ball down the left with Kim Butcher up there is very small. Amy's had to hit perfect shots. Otherwise, as you're seeing, Kim has those quick hands with the soft touch up in the front court, and she pretty much ends every rally five. in which she has a swing up there in the front court. Nice get there. Look at that dive. And almost another Three one, points. but gee, Willikers. Camilla just barely missed that one. I like that dive up front that we saw, Dave. We may actually be able to have a word with the winning team from Utah State on the court, Dave, immediately following this match. Well, it could be immediately following that serve right there. And since you're holding the portable microphone, Dave, I would be making my way to the court by now. And there it is. Utah State takes down LFC in this round of handball action at the 60th United States Handball Association's Four Wall National Handball Championships. Dave Fink's going to go onto the court right now before the ladies get off of this show court to catch Utah State on the court facing the camera. Dave Fink is standing right next to Kim Butcher. And her doubles partner, Dave Stacy Stradley. Let's ladies, go to Dave that Fink. Was really a great match to watch. Kim, how do you develop that amazing touch up in the front court? No idea, actually. <laughs> it just happens. I don't know. Well, you look very natural up there, putting away a lot of balls. What does it mean for you to come here to the Collegiate Nationals, represent your college, and how much fun is this for you? Uh, it's been like the best thing in my life. Um, so it's a lot of fun, and there's only three of us, so it's awesome to be able to represent. It was great watching you guys play, and we'll look forward to watching your upcoming match. So good luck, and continue having a great time here. Back to you, Dave. Thank you very much. Dave Fink going courtside with Kim Butcher and Stacy Stradley, who just basically said it's a lot of fun. They've only got three people here, but they're enjoying the environment. And then when pressed on it, Dave said, how do you get that little paddle kill in the front corner? She just doesn't really know. She just goes for it. And that, you know, sometimes, Ashley, you played other sports too. If you think about what's going on, you won't do well at it. You have to just kind of do it. Yep, I agree. I mean, I, I know you played baseball or softball mm -hmm. in school, and if you had to go in there and say, well, I have to put my hands in this spot, and then I have to take a step, and the coach told me to open up my hips and keep my eye on the ball, and you go through all the checklist of items, you're not going to hit the ball if you have to do that. Well, yeah, your muscles tense up, and you're thinking about it. You strain your muscles. They have the muscle memory to do what you're supposed to, so you may not mentally know what you're doing, but your body knows. So you have to go in there and just kind of practice it exactly. and repeat, repeat, repeat until your muscle memory puts it into the uh, into the bank. Dave? Well, you know, Dave, that a lot of the best players in every sport have a very difficult time teaching the game because it just comes so naturally to them. I think that's what we saw with Kim there. She really doesn't know how she's so successful killing those balls in the front court. It's just an instinct. Well, it's an instinct I wish I had. We're going to take a timeout.
congratulations to Utah State taking down the LFC team here in this round of handball action for Ashley Moeller and Dave Fink. My name is Dave Vincent. We'll have another great one coming up. We already announced it. Michael Wu from the left coast going to the right coast, or is it the other way around, east to west? He's now in Cal Berkeley representing the Bears. Right? It's, it's the Cal Bears, am I correct? The Golden Bears. Okay, the Golden Bears. And then Alfredo Herrera from Pacific. Mike Steele's team, he's one of their top players this year, if Which not the top player. He did get taken down today by, I believe, the 31 seed. He's actually in the drop-down bracket. Yeah, this is a drop. That's right, drop-down. This will be a fun match to watch. Look forward to some great handball and some fireworks, too. Both personalities will be fun to watch and, and absorb, and maybe you could learn something here. That's what it's about. It's the 60th United States Handball Association's four-wall collegiate national handball championships. We're in Springfield, Missouri at Missouri State University. We'll have more action right around the corner. Look for uh, handball to be on your, your set, your TV, or whatever you have hooked up in about 20 minutes. For Linda Manning and Omar Lemus, as well as Ashley Moeller and Dave Fink, my name is Dave Vincent. Stay here at RaceForEight.com. Bring out the action hero in you. Fuel up right and get energized. Be part of the greatest action movie ever. The first movie that puts you in the action. Show us how you train and eat like an action hero. Join in at actionheroalliance.com. What's up, everybody? I'm here at Placer Sports Complex on the campus of Missouri State University here in Springfield, Missouri. We're in a couple weeks, February 22nd through the 26th. We will have over 300 student athletes from all over the world getting ready to throw down some fierce competition in the 60th annual USHA National Collegiate Championships. There will be two facilities. Here at Blaster Sports Complex, we have 12 courts, and also at Hammond Student Center, we have five courts over there. People still think that they know me. He knows the code. It's not about the salary. It's all about reality and making some noise. Teams have been gearing up for this five-day competition all year long. Up for grabs are multiple individual titles, as well as the three different team titles, the women's team, men's team, and combined team titles. This is one of the biggest handball events in the world. Every year, the fact that many misjudge because it makes a living from writing rest. Put it together yourself, got a picture connects. Never rest for someone's self to get some respect. We'd love for you guys to come out and you'll have a good time. And welcome to Bear Country, Mo What, Mo State. This is 20% skill, 80% fear. Be 100% clear because Ryu was ill. Who would have thought he'd be the one that set the West in flames? And I heard him wreck it with the crystal method name of the game. Came back, dropped mega death, took him to church. I like bleach, man. Ryu had the stupidest verse. This dude is the truth. Now everybody giving them guest spots. Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just and there was a. I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point. There's smoke. Key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Play your part in the circle of life. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Working and working out takes a lot of energy. That's why I drink Zenergy. Feeling fantastic and looking good has never been easier. Science, extreme science for your active lifestyle. 